So in today's video we're messing about with the heating system on this tank. So when I installed this pond I said that I put this heater on um, just because it was a bit cold weather and I'm not actually wanting to heat the pond up. What I'm wanting to do is stabilise the temperature. So as you can see now we've got the sun on it, it's still 10 degrees out Celsius so it's pretty cool but a lot of sun and this sun is incredibly hot when you sat in it. So the water of the water in this pond has got quite a good temperature in it at the minute but tonight it's going to go really cold again and that's an issue that's not what I want that's stressful for the fish they don't really like any temperature fluctuations really um, so I want to avoid that and these heaters with the little um, thermostat on the side of them the little analog thing don't really give you much control over it so you just see it's just a little knob and it does tell you temperatures on it but even that's just a guess um, so yeah I'm not I want to know exactly what the temperature is and I want to know that it's going to keep me pond all right so let's have a look at another heater a more expensive one so here we are in the main pond's basement with the electro heater now I don't use this it's an 8 kilowatt heater and it is just it just astronomically expensive to run so I pretty much don't use it and I don't need it anyway my main pond's indoors the building's heated it doesn't get that cold but the pond's water temperature is not 18.1 degrees and the reason for that is because the thermostat of this thing is like in here somewhere it's just sat there so it's quite it's quite affected by the ambient temperature of the air around it I don't know can the camera actually see the temperature yet yeah, can uh, it's quite affected by the ambient temperature around it so it's warmish in this basement at minute um, but it's giving a false reading on the temperature so that's not ideal either the actual temperature of the pond is about 16 uh, could be 16 and a half at the minute with the warm day we're having um, but yeah it's just a bit annoying that so even these the more expensive ones just aren't perfect the only thing I've found that I really like is the system that I've got on my fry tank, so I've just fed them so they've gone out of the way, but I've got this thing and it is a heater controller, really good little thing. You can get, these ones are particularly hard to get and I did a video where I installed it as well, but it is brilliant this thing, absolutely brilliant, I just can't tell you how good it is. So as you can see this one's currently 18.1 degrees and it is 18.1 degrees this pond. It is so accurate, it's brilliant. So what I've recently done, it was one of the advantages of that, that is this pond were at 26 degrees for those that you know. Um, all I did was set that, I just pressed it till it said 18 degrees and left it. So I went from 26, just set it to 18. Didn't have to go down a little bit at a time, that does it itself. So it literally wouldn't, it kept the heater on. Um, so every day it basically dropped a degree or so. Uh, until it got down to 18 degrees which is what I set so you just put in your desired temperature and that gets it down in small increments to what you need it to be so I've got another one and uh, this is for that tank here just to stabilize the temperature so the reason why the temperature is really accurate is because you get a remote thermostat so basically you just sit this in the water and on the uh, quarantine tank it is literally just that white cable there that's going over the side and it just sits just there at the where the filter comes in so I'm going to set this up for the temporary tank so I'm going to put it on a board and I'm going to set it so it can just be plugged in any time I like and set up to heat any tank I like obviously with the quarantine tank it being sat on wall there is fine because it's a permanent tank with that blue tank it's not permanent so I'm going to mount it to a board and get it all set up and that's what we're going to do in this video so this is my basic layout of how I want everything to be placed on this board. So we've got this power input. There may be another board here for power to come into and then junction to these things. Um, there's a switch here, a fuse switch that's going to power this. Um, the heater itself, so the way this thing works is it basically just switches the heater live. So this is your heater live right here, in and out. Um, so basically the heater is just going to get power straight from this uh, but not through this fuse switch 
then I'm going to mount the thermostat on a plug like that. So there's going to be a little plug hanging out of there that goes to the thermostat. And there's going to be another one that goes to the flow switch inside the heater. Um, which isn't necessary particularly, but I'm just, I like the idea of it. I want, I want to visibly able to see that the heater won't work if it has to come on. So basically you can just wire this all up and power the heater as it is. Um, but if the heater's not getting enough water, you won't know that it's not coming on if that makes sense. So the way I'm going to wire it up with putting a input into it from the heater's switch, um, I will know if there's not enough water getting through the system to start the heating system up basically. So yeah, so let's have a go at wiring it up. This also is going to power the pumps so the pumps can get the power from this system without me having to run in more than one extension cable. And I'm probably going to get another one of these, I've only got one at the minute, uh, that's going to then run to your heater. So basically this, I've got the waterproof stuff, um, but it's not really waterproof, so it's not going to be like in the rain directly. Uh, I don't think this is waterproof at all. Um, I'm going to just, I'm going to have it out of the rain, out of the way, but i just got these waterproof connection boxes and stuff um, for the sake of it really it just if they're outside really you want the waterproof ones and uh and that just to keep anything out uh so there we go let's get it wired up and see how it looks okay so i made a good start on it and i've been playing with stuff and that and putting it together a little bit so we've got the power coming in here and obviously that just goes to nowhere and then it's going to go into here so there's enough room in the back of this switch um, to put a few junctions and such uh, so I didn't bother putting a junction box in so I thought I'd put it here, sat in middle um, then I've put this fuse switch in so the fuse switch is going to get its power from here that goes from there as well uh, that's because this little controller only needs an whatever couple of amp fuse that I can find and uh, because it just doesn't use any power at all so what I were going to do is I were going to run a cable from here um, straight, uh, a live cable basically, so the live straight into this um, which is the heating relay of this circuit and then straight out of it straight to the heater which is what I've done on the fry tank but I look at these and I always think god they're a bit naff you know what I mean I, I wanted to put a two and a half mil cable in there because obviously I want to run a two kilowatt heater and a two and a half mil cable won't fit in there. It says that it's rated for three kilowatts, but I just I just don't believe it. You know what I mean? It, I think if this were had a three kilowatt or even two kilowatt heater on it, I think it'd be running right at its limit. Um, and because this is a sort of temporary system for a temporary pond I might one day want to put a bigger heater on it so I might want to put a three kilowatt heater on it so I'm going to design it so that a three kilowatt heater can fit on it and what that means basically is I've got to remove all this stuff about so I'm going to take all these off I'm going to put this socket box up here I'm going to bring this a bit further down and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another box here um, and I'm going to have a big relay in it. So I've got this big 40 amp relay which is going to sit inside a box just here and uh, basically live's going to come out of this probably well I might as well use this now so I'll use the live from this uh, to go into there and then it'll power the relay um, so if I just put like like a 3 amp fuse in that then if anything goes wrong with the relay we're not in any trouble because the relay doesn't need that much power to operate um, so we're not relying on this to have the load, we're relying on this, but this is a 40 amp um, switch, but it's also three phase, so what I can do is I can use each individual uh, leg, so I might just use, I might do, I might switch both live and neutral, so two of them will be live and two of them neutral, so it could cope with 80 amps wired like that through it. Um, but obviously it's you know it's only on a 16 amp circuit so it's never going to see 80 amp it's just you know good way of doing it uh, I've just been testing it that's why it's got this cable in it I've just been playing with it and uh, 
so yeah, I'm going to move all this, I'm going to put that there inside a box and then this is what's going to actually operate, turn on and off your heater rather than this little relay here. So you know, that that's the relay that operates it on this, whereas this is the relay that I'm going to use. You know, big, big difference. This one's... I, I just don't see that really relative for much. And I hate it. it it's like them them switch boxes that you always get for fish ponds, you know, you get these nice little switch boxes with loads of little switches on it, one for your UV lamp, one for your couple of pumps and air pumps and whatever, but this, they always use these little connectors which are impossible to tighten up properly, you can only get really skinny cables in it, you can't, there's no manoeuvring for your wires or out like that, they never give you any room, it's like and the fish ones especially, they're insanely expensive. It's like, why can't it just have a good plug on it? Um, so yeah, that's why when I want to do stuff with, uh, basic, when I want to do stuff with my pond equipment, I just use plug sockets. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. They're designed to work, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. I've got this far and now I'm changing it all, <laughs> so I'm basically just going to move stuff about again. Fun! So this is the final wiring layout, mostly because I'm not doing this again, <laughs> it's an absolute pain in neck. So, power comes in here, goes into the switch box, and then from the switch box it junctions to both this and this, and then basically what's happening here is, so we've got Let's follow the power to this. So this is going to be low amperage because I want it to be. And uh, it's basically just powering the actual controller itself. Um, and then it's splitting off to the heater um, relay. So we've got a split off here to the heater relay. And then that comes down this little wire here into this big relay. Uh, so this is powering it. So this is, this is actually powered by mains power. Um, and then obviously when it powers that will jump down like that. Um, then I've got the switches, so it's switching live and neutral, so I basically just moved it on. Seeing as I've got four poles to work with, I've used two of them for each, for live, two of them for neutral, straight through, just because I can. Um, sometimes with these you're better off wire, if you've got like a really big load that's prone to like arcing and stuff like that, um, what you're better off doing is going through one and then back through the other and then out, and then that way you less chance of getting an arc when it switches, but with a heater I don't think I should have that problem, so I've just done it straight through. So there we go, then we've got the actual socket itself. If you ever are wiring one of these sockets, especially the um, waterproof ones, for some reason, this one isn't one of them, but for some reason I've seen that you can get them with individual earths. So. Normally you just wire one earth say into a plug um, or you know pass through but the this one's linked so the earth in both of the sockets are linked together sometimes in these waterproof ones they won't be linked together so you might be putting earth into one of the sockets but not earth in the other and it is very important when you're talking about ponds and water to have your circuits earthed so that it can actually trip if there's an earth fault or anything like that. So then the output of this comes to this socket here where the heater's going to plug in. Um, so you've got your input, your output to your pumps and UV lights etc and then your output to your uh, heater. So yeah, be quite good. Let's get it all finished off now and uh, get the socket on. Get the cover on this and get some testing. There we go, done. I've given it a quick test, not by plugging it in, just by sort of testing everything. And it should work, so it's ready to be plugged in now and powered up and see what happens basically. So I've wired up the uh, flow level, the water level sensor as this calls it, and the um, thermostat. And then they both come to these two little sockets here, so they're changeable, removable. Um, obviously it's all designed to be detached so I don't want any permanently any I don't want anything permanently attached to it so yeah it's all ready now the only one mistake I kind of made is this the, the uh, box is a little too close to that so you can't open the lid fully but it's not too bad if you open the lid on this and then this you can actually get it almost fully open 
So I'm going to leave the cover off that because I want to see this working. And uh, now I need to get the heater wired up. So the heater needs a bit of modification to actually work with this system. So I'm going to get on with that now. So I've put the thermostat in the vortex and then that just runs down here to wherever the uh, control board is going to be on this wall here out at weather. And the next step is to modify this heater so the cable on it isn't particularly very long. So I want a longer cable on it. And also I'm going to be using the uh, flow switch. So this is the flow switch. I don't want to take it out because water's flowing out. I won't be able to get back in easy. Um, so I'm going to be disconnecting this from the circuit and having another cable coming out which is going to run the signal from this to the uh, controller. And so we got that sort of all wired up, so I basically got the incoming power going straight into the um, thermostat now and then out of the other thermostats, so that one's a 60 degree breaker one. And then the other cable that I've now got going in here basically just goes across the flow switch so that the controller knows when the flow switch is active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the thermostat right fully up to 40 degrees so we can test it and I've just put this down here and I plugged in so I plugged in the thermostat and I plugged in the uh, flow switch and the heater and then I just need to plug in the power to it and then I'll probably plug in the um, other things as well because it's uh, I ain't got more than one power source so I'll just get on with plugging it in and then we'll get a test so here we are ready to test it, so I've plugged the uh, pumps in here so I know that power's going through the system because the pumps are working and uh, basically all I need to do now is turn it on yeah it works, so 21.7 that's the temperature and I'm actually quite pleased with that, it seems it's probably about right 21.7 I was a bit sceptical on how it would go with the thermostat going through one of these connectors or whatever but it seems to be working fine so one of the things I want to do now is this is this system because of this connector here, is supposed to know when the water's off to not turn the heater on. So if I turn the water pump off, like so, this should go into a mode. Yeah, it works. So that's turned off now. It won't put the heater on. And then if I put the pump back on, then it should go back into working mode. So yeah, that works. So I put a clamp meter on here that will tell me that the uh, heater's working and a 2 kilowatt heater is looking for like at least 8 amps, something like that um, so let's turn it on, so we're 20, 20 degrees, if I set it to 23 it should turn on so with these heaters as well, well it turns on because it's got to think about it um, with these controllers you don't want to test it without the thermostat in the pond water because if I, for example if I tested it on the kitchen side and not in the water and it read the air temperature and the air temperature was say 26 degrees it would be trying to heat your pond up to 26 degrees no matter what you set it to because it will only want to drop slowly so you're best off setting it up on your pond and not away from it if that makes sense so yeah so let's just wait for the uh, heating to kick in there we go she's on so what we're drawing 9.22 amps so yeah the heater's drawing quite a bit there so we're drawing quite a bit of power and uh, working pans let's go and have a look at the heater itself there we go so this is how wired the heater up so we've still got the two lights on and the two lights sort of did what they did before this one we're always on just to say it had power and this one we're on when the thermostats are on so if I turn the thermostat down on here see the light goes off and I bet the uh, we've stopped using as much power so yeah the amperage has gone really far down so uh, turn that back up so that wants to be on max now just so that if the water temperature ever did get to 40 degrees there's some sort of fault in here then uh, it just cut out and same way there's a other one here as well that's 60 degrees set to so uh, that one will cut out if it hits 60 degrees so it should be fine now we're all good just put the lid back on and uh, obviously you know you've got the two cables this one, the thick one's your power to it and this one's just a signal so there's not even any power to these it's just like a, a signal cable now from that and uh, it goes round there and down here to this but obviously I'm going to put this up on the wall here 
and uh, I'll get on with that now. Put it up on the wall, it should look good. So there we are, look at the fish. So the um, the fish are doing really well actually. They're pretty happy in this tank, eating well and all that. Um, I thought I'd show them actually because in the last video I did where it showed them, the pond was quite murky. Since then I've turned the UV light on so they're, uh, it's cleared out a lot better. But yeah, we're finished with this now. So I've got the cap back on that and the cables all run round it, up the side there and then across to the uh, thing on the wall. I ain't got any cables on floor or anything like that anymore. This is all um, protected against the uh, rain here, so it should be fine. Uh, as you can see, the temperature is now 21.9 degrees. So it was 21.7 about an hour ago when I started this bit outside. So it's coming up well in the sun today. So this is what, it's what you don't want really in a tank like that, where on a night where it goes cold, it can really lose a lot of temperature on the night. So that's why I wanted this to really well monitor the temperature and keep it as perfect as possible. Um, I think I've 22 degrees now, so uh, yeah, it really comes up in the sun, which is a bit of a pain. But what are you going to do? And then from there, it just sort of plugs in over here where it gets power from there. And I've just coiled that excess cable up. So yeah, it's looking really good. I'm really pleased with it. I'm just going to see how it goes on tonight. Let's give the fishes some food. If they take it. Yeah, the there you go, nice look at the fishies. So if you like this video please like it. If you want to see more videos like this and fishy related videos then please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments then please put them down below and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.